Hey right, guys, how's it going? So I want to spend some time talking about this G14 because the 2024 model just came out and that looks like it's getting a whole new refresh, complete redesign, and it looks beautiful, not going to lie. But also at the same time, they're going to be cutting some corners. I, I don't actually, I shouldn't say that. They're making it thinner and lighter. So with that comes potentially decreased performance. And the good thing about this G14 is it's not going anywhere. They're gonna to continue to sell this laptop in 2024. So the good thing about that is there is a good opportunity to get this on a discount while being able to get better performance than the 2024 model. I know this is a very popular line. Last year when I did my video on the G14, it was probably the best performing video I did last year with like 31,000 views, which is, just nuts how much my channel has grown since then. So I really want to thank you guys so much. And speaking of which guys, I got the Razorblade 16 2024 coming in and Asus sending me some of their G14s and G16s to review. I'm just kidding, they're not. I have less than 5,000 subscribers. Nobody's sending me anything. But if you guys want to help out the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. But anyway, let's just get right into talking about this laptop. It is all magnesium alloy. And I remember last year, I wasn't sure what the material was. I guess probably because of this paint on it, this coat of paint on it, it was hard to tell. So. There has been some slight refinements. The 4080 model and up gets the anime matrix. So you're getting an RG local that shimmers. I've been taking like really good care of this laptop, but I know like this stuff here scratches very easily and you have like a shimmering metallic portion at the back here too. I mean, it looks really cool, but like I said, if you're concerned about scratches, then you definitely gotta worry about that. So let's flip it over the back. You're still getting this two-tone design, which is still unusual. It seems a little bit out of place. It seems like you're getting a higher quality metal here versus the same painted metal, but this overall feels a lot more rigid and premium than last year's version. It could just be in my head, but it really does feel like it. So then let's talk about the ports really quickly. You're getting HDMI 2.1, connects directly to the DGPU, the power cable, which is this barrel connector, and it looks like this is going away, USB Type-C, which supports USB 4, which is awesome. When I connect this to my Thunderbolt dock, I'm getting the full output of it, including display ports. So that's something that was sorely missed with last year's model. So really, really happy about that headphone jack. On the other side, two USB Type-A's, USB Type-C, and a micro SD card slot. So I've always minimized using a micro SD card, but there's a lot of people who utilize that. So if you film primarily on a GoPro or any action camera or that new DJI Pocket 3 that just came out, this port's right at home for you if that's the tool you use to create. So now let's open this up. The screen goes all the way back just like it did before. And that's something that's going away with the new model. And one thing I wanna point out really quickly is the keyboard isn't in that green tinge anymore. This one seems to be a little bit more on the yellow side. It's only being picked up on my camera, but, it, but realistically, I can't see any of that. The keyboard lighting is only single zone RGB. You're not getting perky RGB. So then one thing I've always really liked about Asus laptops are these dedicated buttons, one for Army Crate, so you can, eat, so you can immediately get in there. You got a microphone mute and volume up and volume down. Incredibly useful. Then you have your regular function rows. Keyboard's nice. Very, very fluid to type on. A little bit on the like quiet. I mean, quiet is good. I don't know what I'm saying, but I do like a little bit of a tactile feedback to my keyboards. But I mean, if you're typing in an office environment or where being quiet is important, I mean, obviously that's gonna be more important to you. I'm trying to describe what I I'm not finding appealing about it. The way it presses down, there's like not too much travel and it, it just feels like one of those cheaper membrane style keyboards. I'm not saying that's what it is, but that's just kind of what it seems like to me. But the trackpad on the other hand though is great. It glides well, super smooth, super responsive. Very nice trackpad to use. Definitely one of the stronger ones. The fingerprint sensor is removed, which unfortunately I prefer over Windows Hello, which is located here on the camera. And it, I'm not saying it doesn't work. It works well, but like sometimes I'm at an awkward angle or if I'm like using my laptop while standing up, the camera is not always able to look at my face. If I only, if I only had to choose one, I would always choose fingerprint, but 
Even better would be if it had both. And the keyboard deck, the chassis and the keyboard deck, there's not much flex, very, very minimal. I remember complaining about the build quality of the keyboard deck itself. It feels a lot better. It's not aluminum, it's still magnesium alloy, but I mean, what it kind of feels like, and I don't know if you've ever felt this material before, it, it feels like a powder coating over metal. If you've ever felt that type of material where it's there's a bit of texture to it, but it's still metallic. But the thing is though, even on battery, the keyboard deck gets a bit warm, not like uncomfortably warm. Because it feels warm, it kind of feels a little bit clammy and plasticky. That premium metallic feel kind of goes away when just using it just for me right now, just as a regular laptop. I mean, I am running in performance mode. So even if, if I was to change that to silent, I don't know how much that would make a difference. So that's one thing about the new G14 that's coming out. If you were interested in that one, that one's gonna be an all aluminum design. I think that'll compete much closer with the Razer Blade. And when that comes in, I'll be comparing the Razer Blade 16 to that new G16. So really, really excited about that one. But anyway, back to this laptop. Speakers are good. When I did my comparison between the MacBook and the G14, I did include a speaker test. Unfortunately, the G14 got slaughtered. But I've been really hearing that the new G14 and G16 2024 has some of the best speakers of any laptop, so I can't wait to get that in and test it out. Overall, it's mostly just a spec update, um, but it's a really good spec update too. This performs way better than last year's did. And I'll get to performance in a section. So let's talk about this display really quickly. This is using a 165 hertz panel versus 120 hertz panel last year. And it looks and performs very similar to that, but you are getting the additional benefit of the 165 hertz. But here is where I start to get a little bit of FOMO. If you guys follow my channel regularly, you know I, I'm obsessed with displays and the new G14 is going to use the same, or at least I think it's going to be the same panel as the Asus ZenBook OLED 14 that I recently just did a review of, and that display is amazing. All right, guys, so I'm coming in here during the final editing process of this video, and I just happened to film some footage where I was looking at them side by side, both the ZenBook OLED and the G14 OLED. And I really think that the ZenBook OLED is gonna be the same OLED panel that's in the 2024 OLED model. And I was very, very surprised like at how good they look. Both of them, like the traditional IPS, even the 4080 without that mini LED panel really held its own. So, though the only time I really saw the OLED really pull ahead is in some of the colors because it does have a higher color gamut and also obviously those deeper blacks and some of the darker scenes. But overall, man, I thought I would really love the OLED panel a lot more, but no, this traditional panel is still holding up. And as you can see in this footage, it still looks very good. All right. Back to the regular video. Now this laptop supports Optimus, which is a big upgrade from AMD's version last year. And the cool thing about that is you don't have to constantly restart the computer when you want to switch from dedicated GPU or integrated GPU. It just does it automatically when you launch a game. And also this display supports G-Sync. And the screen gets bright too. One of my issues is the minimum brightness is still a bit high and that's something I complained about in last year's model. And that's something I forget to talk about in some of my other laptop reviews. I need to make sure I do that because using this laptop at night, like, or in a dark room, you don't want to disturb people next to you. And if you want to wind down at night, you don't want to be looking at a bright screen a few minutes before you have to go to bed. That's something I know that's improved with the 14 inch OLED model in my ZenBook. So anyway, moving on, display is good. Traditional IPS, oh, I do wanna mention, if you do get the 4090 version, then you do get a mini LED panel. And from what I've heard, it's a great looking panel. So 2024 is G14 maxes out at a 4070, which sucks for me. I mean, I know not everybody is a creator and they make videos on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. But for me, that's important because I have noticed the performance increase when using a 4080, especially when it comes to VRAM for video creation tools and even just gaming. I know this is just a gimped 4080. It's only running at a max TGP of 125 watts, 
But I mean, it still performs well. You know what, let's just get into the performance now. Okay, so let's start off with Time Spy. So I know I got a lot of different laptops here, but I wanted to give you an idea of how this 125 watt 4080 is performing. So if you look at the GPU versus some of the other bigger 4080s I've seen running at 175 watts, you are getting a bit of a downgrade, I'm not gonna lie. It's about a 16% loss using the same chip. But if you look at the RTX 4070 on the Legion 7, it's actually doing a good amount better. And I would assume that the 4070 on this G14 would perform identical to the Legion 7. I know the Legion 7 is a much thicker machine with better cooling, etc. But the RTX 4070 doesn't really do much better after 115 watts. Let's get into some real games. Okay, so Horizon Zero Dawn. So if you're looking at the two 4080 cards, the 4080 on the SCAR versus the 4080 on the G14, there is a 20% difference. So that's 111 FPS on the G14 versus 140 on the SCAR 16. But then another way to look at it, on the 4070 on the Legion, you're only getting 95 FPS. So there are good gains to be had if you got the 4080 version of the G14. And that's why I'm a little bit disappointed that they removed the 4080 and the 4090 from the G14 2024 model. And at 4K, you're able to run this game at 66 FPS. So let, now let's look at Guardians of the Galaxy. So on the G14, at 4K, you're able to run this game at 66 FPS. If we were to get the SCAR 16, 40, 80, you would get 79 FPS. So again, a good bump up. But then look at the Legion 7 again. So you are getting a good uptick by going with a 4070, even though this is a gimped GPU. And I know I keep saying that over and over again. I just really want to point out that your money isn't necessarily being wasted by going with a 4080 on this smaller machine. At the end of the day, smaller machines I tend to use more because it's more accessible to me, it's always available and it's easier to carry around. My larger laptops like my GT77, that's pretty much just a desktop now. There is value to be had in a 14 inch laptop and sacrifice some visual quality. And I know like the internet seems to just think that more FPS is better all the time. That's not necessarily the case. So then if we look at QHD, on the G14, I'm getting 87 FPS. On the SCAR 16, I'm getting 130. So this one is actually a really big jump. Also with Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm testing at the highest possible settings, RTX Ultra with DLSS quality. So it's a very demanding game. And even today, it's still one of the best looking games out there. And this is the only game I have where I have the testing results from last year's ROG G14. And as you can see, it is a monumental increase. Okay, so now let's test the CPU. We'll start off with Cinebench R23, and it, and the G14 is able to compete nicely with the likes of the M3 MacBook Pro. The MacBook fans got mad at me saying that the Cinebench R23 isn't optimized for Apple Cine Silicon the way 24 is, but you know what my argument to that is, like, that's sometimes that's life. Sometimes on Mac, you're gonna use something that's not optimized for your machine. Like it, you don't really have that issue with Windows. Everything just works. We don't have to optimize for specific hardware. Anyway, but I mean, like I said, it can compete with Intel's best, but again, those are on larger machines. Um, and one thing I did test with Cinebench R24 was on battery and unplugged. And on battery, I got a 22% decrease. So the Ryzen 7940HS isn't able to give you full performance on both battery and plugged in the way the Intel Core Ultra series is. But very limited testing so far, I need to get more laptops in, but we're not at the point yet where we're able to get the same performance both plugged in and unplugged. But even unplugged, the GPU running at 15,471 still does well. It's still able to beat the M3 Max. So that, so that 4080 is just a really, really high performing card. I really like the 4080, even though you're not getting the full power out of it. All right, but anyway, back to the CPU. The, G, the G14 is doing okay. I do want to point out that the Cinebench test that I run is the 10 minute run. So it, it's kind of testing the thermals as well too. So that's performance. There's two ways to look at it. You can say that for $2,600, this is underperforming compared to 
how much more performance you could get per dollar. But the amount of performance packed into this small 14 inch laptop is kind of amazing. The thing is like, I'm just really jealous because something like this didn't really exist when I was in college and I needed, and I had to use a laptop because I was in the dorms and you know, you had to, you have to move every few months or when I was traveling and then I could just bring, and I could use this to game and then also edit photos and stuff. I always had to carry around bigger, thicker laptops or I just had to carry around a thinner laptop that just couldn't do anything else but check email and Google. So this is just such an amazing machine and I'm just excited to see what the future brings, especially with the new Core Ultra series from Intel. I know we're not getting high performance chips this year with them, but I think we will next year. And also that's disappointing we're not getting an upgrade to the GPU with the 40 series. We're not even getting Supras on the laptop side, so I'm not sure why that is, but also at the same time, that could create some good opportunity for finding some good deals out there. So I'm gonna have links down below if you wanna buy this laptop. Those help me out a lot. The little bit of the money I make from those, I just upgrade my equipment and stuff to make better videos. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks guys, I'll see you around.